Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome everyone to our Health Transformation webinar series. I'm your host, Elaine. Today, we'll be sharing on the topic autoimmune disease. Do you know that an autoimmune disease occurs when the body immune system mistakenly attacks healthy organs and tissues? However, people develop immune, autoimmune conditions without even realizing anything is wrong, as it can be asymptomatic or exhibit delay symptoms. Our presenter today, Dr. Mohammad bin Sharudin, consultant internal medicine physician from Columbia Asia Hospital Pucha, will be sharing with us more about this health condition. Dr. Mohammad holds a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery in International Islamic University, Malaysia, and Master of Internal Medicine in University Kabangsa and Malaysia. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Dr. Muhammad. Yeah, doctor. Okay, hello, hi. Uh, good afternoon, a very good day to everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in our session this evening. Uh, I hope everybody have a good lunch earlier so that we can share some information and uh, some knowledge regarding this autoimmune disease. Uh, so I am Dr. Mohammad bin Sharudin, as, as our MC mentioned earlier from Columbia Asia Puchong. So I'll be sharing you uh, some of uh, basic information at least regarding uh, autoimmune disease and uh, what, what is actually autoimmune disease comprised and then how do we uh, detect it or diagnose it and then what are the treatment uh, that is, is, is available. So uh, let us start with some introduction. So um, what is autoimmune disease? Okay, so autoimmune disease, as it names implies, is when your own auto is our own self. Immunity is our immune. So auto means uh, generally our immune system of our body affect or attack our own body. So um, this also sometimes we, we say too much immunity or the immune system is too strong. So usually immune system uh, will uh, affect or get us from, uh, for example, infection like virus, bacteria or other infection. So when we have the infection from virus or bacteria, our immune system will usually uh, protect us by producing uh, immune cells such as antib antibody. So in autoimmune disease, our body again produces the antibody, but it is unable to differentiate our own cells from a foreign body. So what happened in autoimmune disease, our own antibody will attack and uh, cause problems to our own uh, tissue or our own cells. So when that happens, uh, our immune system will mistaken the part of our body as foreign and attacks it. So this is when uh, the problem will, will arise, when this happens for a long time and uh, in, in severe and more severe cases, it will cause the disease. So there's a lot of disease uh, that can happen from this autoimmunity, which we will see later. Okay, so again, this is uh, autoimmunity, where our immune system mistakenly recognize our self tissue as foreign. So our own tissue, for example, our brain or our lung, kidney, skin, you name it, all of our uh, cells and organ in our body can be prone to this autoimmune disease. So each uh, organ that's affected will be a different type of disease but the main uh, cause is the same. Okay, so so far as uh, as of today, there's already more than 80 types of autoimmune disease. So autoimmune disease is, is only uh, is an umbrella. So from this autoimmune disease, there is a lot of diseases that uh, we know at the moment. So at the moment, uh, we have at least more than 80 types of autoimmune disease. So some of them, around 10 to 20, are more common than the others. And sometimes, in some cases, it can overlap. 
So meaning that same patient can have two or three autoimmune disease. So um, as we know from statistic, this autoimmune disease is more common in women. So uh, especially uh, at a childbearing age. So childbearing age usually is around from uh, 14 to 16 to around 40 to 40 to 45. So it can go stretch up to 50. So usually the distribution is uh, about one to two, but it could still happen in, in men, but less common. So most of, the, most of the time when we see a patient with this autoimmune diseases, uh, when we go through the family history, uh, most of the time there will be some uh, family history, uh, for example, immediate family history or extended family history along the line who has some form of uh, autoimmune disease. It could be the same autoimmune disease or it could be other type of autoimmune disease. So generally speaking, we will divide the autoimmune disease into two. Uh, systemic uh, autoimmune disease, meaning the autoimmune disease will affect most of the organ in our body or uh, organ specific, where the specific uh, antibody or autoimmune will target only that organ and don't affect other organs. So generally, uh, we will see later because um, there's a lot of autoimmune disease. We won't be uh, going into detail to each and every one of them, but at least we can maybe share some of the common ones and then how do we treat it. Okay. So going through the uh, risk factor or what are the cause of this autoimmune disease until now we we can't pinpoint one reason or one factor so most of the time it's a combination of many factors that 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 produces this autoimmune disease so usually uh, the main the main uh, contributor is one genetic this is related to the family history and then uh, this genetic we, we we cannot we cannot um, we cannot change this uh, next is uh, it's known to be from the environment. Environment, for example, if we were exposed to any specific infection, either virus or bacteria, or we have exposure to any chemicals or any uh, toxic, so that could predispose to autoimmune disease. And some also postulate uh, our dietary habit, especially our Western Western based um, uh, dietary now, which uh, which is very heavy in 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 carbohydrate, sugar, and processed food, could leads to the uh, uh, to the increase of the production of this autoimmune disease. Okay, so that is about the factor, and then uh, regarding the symptoms. So how do we how do we detect this autoimmune disease? So uh, this is the challenging part in autoimmune disease because usually early on the disease, the symptoms will be vague or mild. And most of the time, it will be intermittent and it can come and go as it likes. So uh, some of the early symptoms that uh, usually happen in autoimmune disease were as follows. Nah. So number one, uh, you will have lethargy, muscle weakness, you will feel very tired, and then you can have muscles discomfort and pain. Uh, you can have a bit of fever here and there. Maybe if you check, the temperature will be less than 38, maybe 37.3, 37.5. And then you have this for a period of time and then it goes away. And then maybe after some time, it comes back. Uh, you can have problem in your joints, pain and swelling of your joint. You can have hair loss or in, in medical term, we call alopecia. So hair loss is also one of the uh, symptoms that, that can happen in, in early uh, autoimmune disease. We can have trouble concentrating. Sometimes you can have skin rashes. And if the immune is affecting your nerve, it can have some uh, problems. Uh, for example, numbness, a bit uncomfortable on your hand and feet. So sometimes when this when we encounter all the symptoms because it's quite vague and then it's not very troublesome so most of the time uh, we dismiss the symptoms as 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 normal so uh, sometimes when this occurs and then continues then only when the more specific symptoms become more prominent 
according to the specific disease, then only we will seek the treatment from, from doctors. Okay, so again, just a diagram to show that some of the common uh, early symptoms in autoimmune disease, uh, and like I mentioned, uh, you have persistent low grade fever, bit of palpitation here and there, short of breath, itchy skin or rashes, infection, uh, joint muscle, weakness, tingling of the hands and feet, fatigue, meaning lethargy or tiredness. Uh, you can have some changes in your weight, especially increase, not, not reduce. And then uh, you can have hair loss, you can have some swollen glands here and there. Brain fog is like, uh, sometimes you can feel like you are not uh, uh, yourself. For example, you can't concentrate when you are doing things. Yeah? Okay, so those are the, the common early symptoms that usually will, will come before you present to doctor. So when you have, for example, this kind of symptoms, then you have to be you have to alert and then you need to know whether is this symptoms is 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 actually um, uh, showing you that you are having some other serious disease that need to be investigated so maybe we can discuss some common autoimmune diseases okay so like i mentioned before we go to the common diseases we subdivide the autoimmune disease into organ specific or systemic so organ specific usually it will affect only that specific um, organ and systemic mainly it can affect the whole body so example for uh, organ specific is one we call autoimmune thyroid disease so i think this one is quite common in our population uh, again it's common in women as for most of the autoimmune disease and uh, in this uh, thyroid disease, you have two possibility that can happen. Number one, uh, we call Graves disease. So in Graves disease, what happened? If you can see the bottom right uh, diagram, uh, on the left is the normal normal person with thyroid, and, and number two, you can see uh, the antibodies of our body confuses the thyroid cell as. Uh, as foreign and then it will attack the uh, thyroid uh, gland and then it will cause um, excessive production. So it means the antibody will cause to trigger the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormone. So when you have more thyroid hormone, it will cause the symptoms of um, hyperthyroid or increase in thyroid production. So for example, you, will have, you can have anxiety, you can have hand tremor, and then you can have palpitation. Uh, usually you will have some intolerance to heat uh, and then your appetite can increase, but uh, apart from that, your weight can reduce. So these are some of the symptoms of excess thyroid hormone, which is ha which happens in, in Graves disease. So the other type is Hashimoto disease. So in Hashimoto disease, it's the opposite of Graves disease where the uh, antibody of our body Again, it attacks the thyroid gland, but in Graves' disease, it will cause overproduction of thyroid hormone, but in Hashimoto disease, the antibody will attack the thyroid glands and cells and then cause destruction. And then uh, it will cause the, our thyroid gland uh, not able to produce adequate thyroid hormone to maintain our, our normal physiology. So. Uh, there will be treatment for this. For example, if it's if the in Graves disease, excess excess hormone, we will need to give uh, uh, drugs that can cause to reduce the the level of a thyroid called cabimazole or propyl thiourosyl. And in Hashimoto disease, because it's inadequate production of thyroid hormone, what usually the doctor will prescribe is the thyroid hormone replacement, uh, we call it thyroxine. It's a synthetic, so it mimics our normal thyroid hormone to replace whatever that our body is lacking. So usually when you start the medication, either for Graves or Hashimoto disease, uh, the doctor will monitor our thyroid function uh, frequently to make sure it's in the normal range so that we can function normally. Okay, so that is some, some information regarding thyroid disease. So, 
Next, uh, we can see this is quite common, but in uh, this disease, skin disease is actually uh, quite evenly distributed uh, between men and women uh, compared to autoimmune thyroid disease. So the name is psoriasis. So what happened in psoriasis, the, um, the antibody of our body will attack some parts of our skin then causes, uh, like you can see in the diagram, some changes in our skin, especially at the epithelial layer. It causes scaly and this crusty uh, lesions. So um, some of other type of um, skin, disease, skin disease, for example, fungal infection sometimes can mimic psoriasis. So what we need to do if we, if we have this kind of scaly lesion on our body or nails so we need to see a dermatologist and then from there usually the diagnosis will be uh, by skin biopsy where we will take some part of your skin thickness and then we will send to the lab and then under microscope we will confirm whether you have this problem so there's there's no uh, specific blood test for psoriasis but usually how the doctor diagnose it is by by the location of the, the, the skin lesion and also uh, by the findings of the skin biopsy. Okay. Okay. So next, next is uh, type 1 diabetic mellitus. So I think uh, we might confuse this with type 2 diabetes mellitus. So uh, if, you, if you talk about diabetes mellitus, the normal diabetes is the one that happens in uh, <coughs> usually elderly, but nowadays in our population, it is uh, becoming more and more frequent is we call it type two diabetes. So type two diabetes is different from type one diabetes. So uh, when we are talking about autoimmune disease, we are referring to type one diabetes mellitus. So what happened in type one diabetes mellitus, usually it will occur Early on, for example, when you are younger, and usually it will happen in children. So what happened, the antibody from our body will attack the pancreas. So pancreas is one of our the organ in our body. One of the function is to produce insulin. So as you know, insulin is the important hormone that will facilitate uh, the usage of our glucose when we eat the, the glucose into the cells to be to be used as energy so without insulin the glucose will be high and then it will cause all the problems associated with diabetes so as you can see with from the diagram uh, on the left lower left uh, in healthy individual the pancreas will produce an insulin so insulin will help the glucose to be used by the cell but in this type 1 diabetic uh, the immune cells will destroy the, the specifically what we call the beta cells in the pancreas. In pancreas, we have alpha and beta cells. The beta cells in the pancreas will, is, is the one responsible to produce the insulin. So the immune cell will destroy the beta cells in the pancreas. And then in turn, the pancreas won't be able to produce insulin or it will be very much reduced. So the glucose will stay in our blood and then our, our cells won't be able to use the glucose. So in this case, uh, you, you, if, if it's not diagnosed, so then the patient will, will, will produce all the symptoms associated with high sugar. So the other diagram on the upper right is showing us what is the difference between type 1 and type 2. So as I mentioned, in type 1, our body or our pancreas specifically is not able to produce the insulin. So decrease insulin in the blood vessel. And then uh, the when our insulin is reduced, so there's no, the sugar will be high and then our muscle will be unable to use it. Uh, in contrast, in type two, usually the causes is not autoimmune. The causes is usually uh, if you are obese and if you have family history, and then if you have a very bad lifestyle, so this will cause type 2 diabetes. So what happened in type 2 diabetes, your pancreas is functioning as normal. It can produce the insulin. So you see the insulin is sufficient. But the problem in type 2 diabetes is we call insulin resistance. So the 
the cells in our muscles in our body have a resistance to the insulin because of the phase that we mentioned earlier. So uh, insulin is sufficient, but the muscle or our body organs is resistant to the insulin. So it means they cannot use the insulin. So when they cannot use the insulin again, the sugar will stay in the blood and then causes problem. So those are the different from type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So in type 1 diabetes, because the problem is uh, the body cannot produce enough insulin, so then the only option for type 1 diabetes is insulin replacement, where they have to inject under the skin the insulin to replace uh, the one that to, to replace the one that we, the body cannot replace. So in type 2 diabetes, we can still use medication because the problem is not lack of insulin. The problem is insulin resistance. So earlier on in type 2 diabetes, um, you can use medication to increase the sensitivity of insulin. And then later on, if uh, once the medication uh, is, 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 is maximized and cannot work, then only we add on insulin. So insulin will be the one of the last or uh, the final treatment to be added in type 2 diabetes. But uh, unlike type 1 diabetic, from the get-go, from beginning, the insulin will be started. Okay, so usually this one is, 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 is not reversible and then the patient will require lifelong insulin. Okay, this is another uh, common, we can say common problem in, in autoimmune disease, although, although maybe the public won't know so much because most of the time this patient will, will present to, we call it hematologist or blood doctor. So what happened, this, this, this uh, disease is called ITP, which is uh, immune, immuno, immune thrombocytopenic purpura. So immune is uh, the, 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 the cause is immune. Thrombocytopenic uh, it is low platelet. Thrombocyte is our platelet. Thrombocytopenia is low platelet. Purpura because it can cause this uh, petit K or bleeding under our skin. So usually what happens again, the antibody will, will target the platelet and then affect the production of platelet. Our normal platelet usually is between 150 to 400 uh, times 10 to the power of 9 per liter. So um, if you know about dengue, you can have low platelet as well, but in this disease, uh, the antibody will cause the platelet to be less than 150. And then the symptoms that usually the patient will, will have will be depending on the platelet level. The lower the platelet, the, the more severe the, the symptoms. For example, if the platelet is just mildly reduced, uh, as you can see in the picture, they can have this petit or purpura and sometimes they can be easily bruised. For example, when you have a trivial knock, for example, on the, on the table or on the door, you can have a significant bruise. Where in, in, normal, uh, in normal, usually normal patient, usually we don't have that kind of bruise. So treatment is usually steroid and then uh, with immunosuppressive. So usually we will need to uh, reduce the immune immune um, response. And then once that happens, the platelet will be able to increase. Okay. All right. So those are the, um, those are the uh, type of autoimmune disease that involving specific organs. So now we go through some of the disease that can cause systemic involvement. Systemic meaning it can involve uh, two or more organs. So number one, uh, I think this is quite common. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis, again, common in women. So what happens? Uh, the antibody will attack the joints of uh, our body. So especially most of the time, it will affect the small joints. For example, the joints of our hands and feet. Uh, initially, later on, it can, it can cause uh, inflammation or affect the bigger joints in our body. So other than the joints in this rheumatoid arthritis, it can affect other part of our body. For example, eye, it can cause dry eye and irritation, and also it can cause problems to the lungs. So that's why, although rheumatoid arthritis mainly affect the joints, but it is considered a systemic autoimmune disease because it can affect other type of our organ. So 
the most common test that we do in this uh, rheumatoid arthritis or we call it RA is rheumatoid factor which is a rheumatoid factor um, uh, test this is a blood test and then if this is positive and then you have the symptoms for example most of the time it's joint pain and joint swelling then it confirms that you have this rheumatoid arthritis so as you can see from the diagram below usually uh, as i mentioned it affects mainly the small joint especially the hand joint so in early disease the check the x-ray of the hand is normal and then usually uh, when you progress it will cause destruction of your joint so usually initially in for example moderate and severe it will cause inflammation and swelling of the joint but uh, eventually if it's not treated and detect early then it will cause what we call is terminal rheumatoid arthritis where the joint will be destroyed so i think if you see uh, an advanced patient like the picture that i put up on the upper right column uh, the hands are all uh, uh, already deformed so this is already a uh, late stage uh, most of the time when this kind when this stage is um, achieved then usually the treatment will be a bit difficult so when we detect it early then usually we can give treatment uh, usually contains steroid and also immunosuppressive and um, this will be able we, we can be we, we can uh, prevent from the progression of disease into the late stage okay so uh, after rheumatoid arthritis next is lupus so i think this one uh, probably we will know better compared to rheumatoid arthritis so the full name of this lupus disease is we call it sle is systemic lupus erythromatosis so as the name implies the disease is systemic it can cause problem in a lot of our organ in our body so some of the common symptoms that can have is number one they can have rash and then typically in patient if you see they can have uh, what we call is butterfly rash so they can have a butterfly like shape rash over the nose and uh, over the eye so this is one of the pattern pneumonic uh, in 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 uh, SLE. So other than the rash, they can have alopecia or excessive uh, hair fall. They can have uh, multiple mouth ulcer, recurrent mouth ulcer. They can have joint pain. Again, about the same as as rheumatoid arthritis, but this one involve more than that. So uh, when you have rash, joint pain, uh, you can have alopecia or fever. So those are considered early early uh, stage and when you have late stage or severe SLE when it involves your organ so the main organs that usually it can involve is number one it can affect the heart it can cause inflammation of the heart uh, it can cause a problem in the kidney where we call lupus nephritis so this is one of the most dangerous because if it's uh, untreated and if it's not detected early um, uh, the, it can progress into kidney failure and eventually you will need dialysis. So we want to detect this disease early, for example, especially if it's involving the kidney. And one of the other serious complications of this disease as it can mm -hmm. affect our brain, it can cause lupus uh, cerebritis and lupus um, infection, uh, sorry, inflammation in, in, in the brain. So this is also could potentially be life-threatening. So uh, the main uh, test that we do in lupus, apart from the other tests, is usually we look for this ANA and NTDS DNA test. This is a blood test and usually one of them will be positive in this lupus um, disease. So again, treatment is almost similar like rheumatoid arthritis, mainly because of the disease is caused by increased immune production so what we need to do is we need to balance out or reduce the immune response so this usually uh, will need will require a steroid usage and also uh, drugs that are immunosuppressive okay so these are the picture of some of the um, other autoimmune disease that 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 uh, present so as i mentioned we have a more than 80 disease 
but uh, some of them are mentioned here. For example, in the brain, it can cause multiple sclerosis, it can cause Gulen Barry syndrome. Yeah? So, in thyroid, I mentioned earlier Hashimoto disease, Graves disease. Uh, for skin involvement, I mentioned earlier regarding psoriasis, but it can also develop vitiligo. If vitiligo is the is where you have the discoloration or uh, of your skin, and then eczema. Eczema in in some way also most of the time is autoimmune in origin, and then uh, you can have problem in our gastrointestinal. For example, we call it celiac disease. Or there's one condition called inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, where it uh, it has two types in, in inflammatory bowel disease, which is Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So both of these disease is uh, caused by autoimmune disease. And as I mentioned earlier, our type one diabetes mellitus, which, which usually occurs in children, and then um, some autoimmune disease that can affect our musculoskeletal is the most common is rheumatoid arthritis, I mentioned earlier, where it affects our joint. Mm -hmm. And a uh, few more other types that are more, uh, not, not, not as common as rheumatoid arthritis is ankylosing spondylitis, where this will affect our, our spine. And also polymalgia rheumatica will because mainly it will if, uh, affect our muscles. And uh, for the blood, as I mentioned earlier, one is uh, ITP, immune, immune thrombocytopurpura. Another disease that is quite common is we call hemolytic anemia, where the antibody will affect the production of our red blood cells. So it will cause anemia, uh, which is uh, low hemoglobin or low red blood cells. Okay. Okay. So those are some of the, the diseases that uh, commonly seen uh, in autoimmune disease. So how, how do you assess and how do you treat generally? Because um, every, every type of autoimmune disease, the treatment will be very specific. And then I think for, for, for our knowledge, for the public knowledge, what we need to know is how do we uh, identify the early symptoms and then from there, we will seek treatment from doctor. And then from there, we will try to zoom in what are the exact type of the treatment. And then the treatment will be will be specified by the uh, specific by, by the specific specialist. So number one, when you have all the symptoms, you will need a proper assessment by doctor, which includes number one, history taking. So mainly we want to know how long do you have the symptoms and what are the symptoms that are associated. And then especially one important component is uh, whether we have any family history in this kind of disease. And then uh, the doctor will proceed with physical examination to see uh, is there any pos positive finding to signify that specific autoimmune disease. And then uh, the other important component is actually a high suspicion from the treating doctor itself because usually sometimes uh, if the history is not very clear and then physical examination, especially in early disease. And if there is no suspicion from the doctor, then usually uh, there will be no uh, investigation done for autoimmune disease and sometimes this can be missed. So it will need, it will need a very good um, cooperation from the patient and also it will need a high suspicion from the treating doctor because this is where uh, this disease is usually it comes under the radar and then it will be missed by, by both patients and doctors. So usually, uh, most commonly, blood tests is important in, in some of the diseases. And then uh, other investigation, for example, you can have, you can uh, do urine tests and also uh, some other radiological investigation. For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, you need x-ray to see the, the joints that is involved. So. Once we diagnose that specific type of autoimmune disease, uh, usually the doctor will refer to the specific specialty. And because it involves many organs, so usually we will zoom in into the specific specialty. For example, uh, uh, the first one is rheumatologist. This is where uh, when you have rheumatoid arthritis or any disease 
that I mentioned earlier that involve musculoskeletal usually or SLE per se, it will be referred to rheumatologist. For example, gastroenterologist will manage your inflammatory bowel disease, as I mentioned earlier, your uh, Crohn's disease, your ulcerative colitis or um, celiac disease. So endocrinologist is the, the specialized in, in hormone therapy. So usually this is uh, for patients who have uh, autoimmune thyroid disease, Earlier, I mentioned about the uh, Graves disease and the Hashimoto disease, and also when the patient is diagnosed with type 1 diabetes mellitus, where they need the insulin. So, this is where the endocrinologist will come in. Uh, dermatologist is skin specialist. So, this one mainly to treat the, the for example, condition that I mentioned, uh, the psoriasis. And also, uh, hematologist is one of the specialists that is important in, in diagnosing and treating, for example, autoimmune disease that, that, that affects the blood, for example, the immune thrombocytopenic purpura or uh, ITP and also hemolytic anemia. One, one other specialty that I did mention here is nephrologist where um, uh, the, this is a kidney specialist and then usually most of the time when you have uh, especially your lupus nephritis from SLE then uh, the doctor will refer to to this nephrologist or kidney specialist to treat the to treat the uh, kidney involvement in lupus nephritis and sometimes if the patient has one or two organs that are involved in that specific um, autoimmune disease uh, there will be overlap uh, in doctors that treating. So, for example, if you have SLE because it can affect uh, a lot of organs in our body, then you might you you will be managed number one by rheumatologist to manage the SLE itself. And for example, if you is already involving the kidney, you will be referred to nephrologist. So, nephrologist and rheumatologist in your case will be will manage concurrently. Um, to monitor and then uh, treat your disease. So, so mainly the treatment for for this uh, autoimmune disease is mainly number one is to control the symptoms that appear. For example, if you have joint pain, we will give painkiller and then um, and then treatment to control the symptoms. And then number two, if if it's possible in that specific disease, we will aim for remission. Remission means you are free from the disease, but you are not cured because most of the time, autoimmune disease, we have no cure because we cannot control our immune. So what we can do is we can give treatment, for example, in steroid, in immunosuppressive, it will suppress the immune disease up until we achieve remission, so which is free from the disease. And then uh, we want to maintain this remission as long as possible. So sometimes uh, when you are in remission, you can have uh, recurrence which we call flare. So flare is when you're already in remission and then maybe one or two years down the road the disease re resurface and then we call it flare. So which each flare um, it will cause further damage to the organs and then this is is, is not uh, we, we, we don't want this because we, we want to aim for remission as long as possible and then with minimal flare along the way. So again, symptoms can be, for example, painkiller to reduce the swelling and also the pain. And then in some uh, specific autoimmune disease, uh, we will need a replacement therapy, especially if it's involving hormonal balance. Uh, I mentioned about thyroid and insulin. So in, in thyroid, if it's uh, Hashimoto disease, which is low in thyroid, we will replace with the thyroid hormone. And in type 1 diabetes mellitus, where your body is unable to produce insulin, we will we will give you the insulin therapy to replace it. And then finally, um, some of the autoimmune, we can treat to suppress the immune reaction. Although not all autoimmune disease can be treated this way, some of it can be. So the two most, most common um, uh, uh, medication to treat this is number one, steroid. Uh, immunosuppressive. So immunosuppressive, you have uh, medication and also you have some other specific uh, treatment that are uh, more recent, for example, uh, it calls biologic. So th those are the things that is, is uh, reserved to the advanced autoimmune disease. As, and, and then most commonly, we, we, we only deal with this steroid immunosuppressive.
So I think with that, um, I'll probably end my presentation and then um, I, I'll pass it back to our MC and then I can take some of few questions if, if there's, there is. Uh, thank you very much again to for tuning in today to to, to hear the sharing regarding this, this, this disease, uh, autoimmune disease, and then hope it can give some benefit and then some uh, information regarding the disease so that it can help us and our friends and especially our families to detect this disease. And then we can, if we can detect it early, and then the best is to treat this 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 disease early so that we can prevent from the disease to progress. So with that, thank you again. Yeah, doctor, we have. Thank you, doctor, for the sharing. We'll go ahead and take some questions. Sure. So. From Elaine, hi doctor, if you have an autoimmune disease, what happens with the immune system? Sorry, again? If having an autoimmune disease, then what will happen with the immune system? Okay, so usually in, in uh, immune disease, because uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of type of immune disease. So um, in autoimmune disease, the antibody that is supposed to be protecting our body from bacteria or viruses, in turn confuses our body or our own cells and organ as a foreign body. So um, usually the antibody which is produced towards that specific uh, organ in our body, for example, thyroid or uh, joints, it will it can cause a problem to that particular organs. But our immune immune system itself is still intact. So, for example, if you have infection, if you have uh, viral infection, if you have bacterial infection, most of the time, our body will still be able to um, fight the infection. But most of the time, when you have autoimmune disease, especially if the disease is active then uh, the, our immunity will be reduced and then sometimes what can happen during the event when you have uh, infection from virus or bacteria, it can be slightly worse than normal. But especially if, if for example, you, the disease is in remission and it's not active, then your immune system is, is, is fairly okay. So that's why we want to achieve remission and then if possible, we want to detect the, the disease early. So to answer the question, in terms of immunity, it will be depending on the type of the uh, in, on, in the type of the autoimmune disease itself. And then most of the time, our immune system is still intact, but only that particular antibody is affected our organ. Okay, next question, doctor. SBN is asking if someone is suffer from autoimmune disease, is it recommended to take COVID nineteen vaccine? Okay, yes, I think this one is also an important question. Thank you. So uh, autoimmune disease, because again, uh, as I mentioned, it affect a specific. Uh, it produces specific antibody to a specific organ or cells in our body. So as I mentioned earlier, our normal immune system usually is still intact. So. Uh, we can still take the COVID-19 vaccine, but usually um, in terms of the disease itself, you want the uh, autoimmune disease uh, at the moment to be well controlled because uh, as I mentioned earlier, if the autoimmune disease is active and it's, is, is it, it is not in remission, then somehow it will slightly have some effect to our immune system. So for example, if you take the COVID-19 vaccine, you might have a more serious side effect and then maybe the effect of the body to fight COVID will, will be less. So most of the time, the doctor will be um, providing you the information regarding what is the status of your autoimmune disease and uh, if it's controlled and if it's safe for you, then you can take it. So technically speaking, the autoimmune disease sufferer will be the one that we want to prioritize to get the COVID vaccine because um, when you have the COVID 
19 infection, the effect to our body will be worse. For example, if you if you have autoimmunity, so so if possible, we want everybody to have the vaccine, especially autoimmune disease, because they are prone to get more severe disease. But uh, recommendation will be will be a case to case basis because it will be depending on what type of autoimmune disease because we cannot give a blanket rule for everybody everything. It will be depending on the specific autoimmune disease, and then uh, we need to have a proper discussion with the treating doctor to to know what is the status of the disease at that point of time, and then whether it is recommended to go for the vaccine. So I think that is the best way. Okay. Next question. Hi, Doctor. Why are some autoimmune diseases difficult to diagnose? Hmm. Thank you, Lucy. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the main uh, problem to diagnose is number one, because of the vague symptoms. So the vague symptoms is, for example, patient only comes with lethargic, very a bit of joint pain here and there, muscle pain, low grade fever, and then uh, sometimes joint pain, unable to concentrate. So this kind of symptoms usually is quite vague. So, and then to add on that, it can come and go. So sometimes it can happen, after some time it will go away and then it will come again. So if you are, if you present with this kind of early symptoms, then it will be a bit difficult to, to, to diagnose. Uh, unless, as I mentioned earlier, if the doctor itself has a high index of suspicion, then they can proceed to do all the tests, for example, if you suspect autoimmune disease, and then we can diagnose. But if you present to doctor with a very, uh, for example, if the autoimmune disease is very clear in terms of the symptoms and most of the time, it can be diagnosed. But most of the time in early diseases, it can be a bit challenging. Okay. Next question, doctor. From Shazliana, since autoimmune disease can pass through genetic, so meaning that we need to avoid marry with someone who have autoimmune disease if we're ready to pass to the next generation? Mm, okay, all right. So number one, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is more common in women. So most of the time it happened, if you if you go around and ask, most of the time it happened in women. But as I mentioned, it will be possible also in, in men. Uh, so we don't we don't normally advise not to marry if both of you have autoimmune disease because um, the autoimmune disease uh, in terms of the production or the occurrence of the disease we cannot predict whether uh, and then sometimes because of the disease is very and then a lot of type so for example in diseases for example like thalassemia or some other diseases more 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 common for example thalassemia as i mentioned then that will be more it's, it's like an added added uh, complication for example if both of the parents have thalassemia then the children can have higher higher um, possibility to get a more severe thalassemia but in autoimmune disease because in terms of the cause and then the genetic, it's a bit difficult to, to find out what is actually happening. So we don't normally uh, advise to avoid marriage, but we need to be more careful. And then for example, if uh, it happens, both of the parents have autoimmune disease, whether is it the same disease or different disease. So we have to be more careful and mindful for the children and then monitor the symptoms. If, if there is, then we need to get uh, treatment early but but to answer the question we, we, we don't normally advise to avoid mm, thank you doctor okay and the other questions from shahila azwin hi doctor is singlish part of autoimmune disease what is the necessary mm -hmm. treatment so shingles is uh one of the skin disease so uh, this one also again it can be confused with the one I mentioned about psoriasis. Shingles is actually because of a uh, viral activation. So um, uh, usually during 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 our younger age, you will get what what you call your chicken pox or varicella zoster. So this varicella zoster can be um, can can be dormant and then it will become inactive in our body. And then later in life, it can be activated. And then this can cause the shingle. So 
uh, technically speaking, is is caused by this the reactivation of the virus in our body, which is herpes zoster, and then uh, this is um, not really related to autoimmune immune disease. And then the treatment for it is if if you see if patients who are affected by shingle, the the doctor will give uh, antiviral to reduce the effect of the virus. So it is not an autoimmune disease text. Okay. Next question from Jessica Eka. May I know if vitiligo is one of autoimmune disease also? If yes, can it lead to any other serious autoimmune disease? Yes, uh, vitiligo is one of the autoimmune diseases. I mean, I think late, uh, earlier I meant uh, there's, there's one in my the picture because uh, autoimmune disease, there's few that can cause problem in the skin. So one of it, the most common is psoriasis. And then the other one is vitiligo. Vitiligo is where uh, it can affect uh, the skin, the skin where um, the melatonin, where the where the organ of our skin, uh, area of our skin that produces the pigmentation. So it affects the pigmentation, and then it will cause vitiligo. Or um, and then this is this is uh, caused by the autoimmune. So. Uh, the treatment usually for vitiligo is sometimes uh, uh, to confirm it, you need a uh, skin biopsy and then uh, the doctor can give some steroid cream, for example, to try to see whether there's any response. But most of the time, it is confined to the skin and then uh, we know it's, it's uh, organ-specific and it's, it's not systemic and then most of the time, it won't cause any other serious um, autoimmune disease or serious organ involvement. But we, we need to know because autoimmune disease is the, the cause is is same, which is the production of antibody. So as I mentioned earlier, there is a possibility of overlap in autoimmune disease. For example, you have uh, vitiligo and at the same time you have, for example, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So you can have two or three autoimmune diseases at the same time because the cause is the same, it's antibody. Uh, but to answer the question, vitiligo itself, it won't be, it won't cause more problem other than uh, involving the skin. But if you have other autoimmune diseases at the same time, that is more serious, that can cause a more problematic problem. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, there's a question from Stingy. Could Anno help check help in detect autoimmune diseases? Mm. So I think in annual health check, most of the time we will do a basic blood test and also uh, some uh, radiological tests, for example, chest x-ray and ultrasound. So uh, the annual health check sometimes can help because uh, most of the time it will include some important components in our body. For example, uh, usually we will do the full blood count looking at our cells. So for example, if our platelet number is low, then we can we can uh, we can detect uh, what do you call that uh, ITP. For example, when you check the sugar, if the sugar is high, then if you are young, then we we can rule out type one diabetic mellitus. And then, uh, for example, if the kidney involvement, for example, if you suspect a lupus to be involved in the kidney, we can detect it from the kidney. Uh, blood test and also the urine. So yes, uh, some of the tests in uh, our annual health checkup will be able to detect some of the effect of the autoimmune disease to the blood. But most of the time, it won't be able to, to give you the exact diagnosis because most of the time, autoimmune diseases have their own specialized tests. For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, we do rheumatoid factor. So some annual health checkup screening, they, in, they include rheumatoid factor, so that's good. So if you have that positive and then you have the symptoms, then you can detect it. So um, it will be depending on the, on the blood test that's included in annual health checkup, but generally some of the co common autoimmune disease can be detected from autoimmune disease, uh, but usually it's, it's a way of um, screening. And then when, uh, we find something is abnormal and then we need to go for specific tests for that specific uh, autoimmune disease to confirm it. Okay. Doctor, there's another question from Shamini Debbie. Does eczema falls under autoimmune disease? 
um, eczema um, this is also a small debate so technically speaking it's not considered under the full autoimmune disease but uh, commonly we see that um, you have you have patients who have eczema that has a history of family disease and then again it is treated by steroid so most probably it has some component of autoimmune disease but technically speaking we don't say it's fully autoimmune disease so some because uh, some of the uh, patient that uh, comes with eczema if you see is more related to for example if they have uh, allergic or inflammatory uh, a condition for example if they have bronchial asthma this inflammatory disease bronchial asthma if they have allergic rhinitis or conjunctivitis and then they can have this eczema so it is also passed through with, with family and genetic, but uh, most probably it has some immune component, but uh, we don't usually say it's, it's, a, it's, it's a full blown autoimmune disease. Okay, doctor, last questions. From Hasli Ismail. I'm autoimmune RA. Doctor, what is RA? RA is a rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right. So seven years ago. So so good. Good. So at the moment you are having rheumatoid arthritis seven years ago. Uh, currently quite stable. So I assume you are in remission. So that's what we call when you are stable on in that particular disease. So not on medication means you are in remission. So basically, uh, in terms of the vaccination, it is okay for you because as I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure your disease is under control to minimize the effect. So basically for you, it is uh, recommended. And then as far as we know, uh, it is safe for you to take the vaccine. And from the, from the, from the evidence that we, we have so far, there's no specific vaccine that uh, can or cannot be given to you. And then, for example, AstraZeneca is fairly okay for you, but after the vaccination, you just need to monitor uh, your your symptoms and situation because, uh, again, this is new. Our the, the COVID nineteen infection is new, and then the vaccine is even newer. So, we we we, we don't know fully what is the effect of uh, these vaccines towards uh, autoimmune and other diseases, but. Uh, generally speaking, when you are having, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, it is uh, good if you can have the vaccination because COVID infection, whatever it is, it will be more severe in the, if, if you get the disease. So, yes, uh, especially if you are in remission, uh, there is no problem for you to take the vaccine. Okay. Thank you so much, doctor, for the sharing. Okay. Dr. Hong Mohammed bin Sharuddin is a consultant, internal medicine physician from Columbia Asia Hospital, Pucho. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today. So we shall see you guys again soon. Bye bye. Thank you, Doctor, okay. for the sharing. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.